Hello everyone, I am the Tippy Toes Zombie, I like to limbo, often I fall on people's heads, and I'm your host here on In-House Voice Acting. <laughs> now I'm sorry to say that this will be our final episode as we, like many other shows lately, have been cancelled. A lot of the other cancelled shows have been thanking their crews, and I'd like to do that as well. A big thank you to our director, Yarg Morningstar, for always being able to guide us in how to best present our content. Thank you to our floor manager, Namoris Headtrip, for keeping us safe. This job is way more dangerous than it looks. And finally, a huge thank you to Dravde Youngthrush, our production assistant for getting me this water. I think you may have accomplished the most important task of all, buddy. I think now it's time to move on to the actual content part of our show, where we're finally covering a voice actress, namely Cree Summer, who has been in the business since she was 14 when she played Penny in Inspector Gadget. He better follow Uncle Gadget, Brain. Who is often regarded as the gold standard for child characters in animation. Cree Summer's characters are usually pretty easy to recognize as her, even if there is some variation in her voice. She has shown that she can do some more varied voices when she wants to, but they're usually still pretty recognizable as her. I feel like Cree Summer is likely to have portrayed a role that's iconic to your childhood if you're anywhere from college age to 45 at least. We'll start by going into those roles that people are likely to be super nostalgic about. I've already talked about Cree Summer's role as Penny in Inspector Gadget, who was constantly rescuing her uncle, the titular character, and was probably who most would consider the real star of the show. So I'm going to start with the roles that are super iconic to my childhood. Elmira Duff was created as an equivalent to Elmer Fudd in Tiny Toon Adventures. Hi, Monty! Although she was kind of reversed, since she was an animal lover who kept accidentally hurting animals, instead of a hunter who couldn't manage to kill anything. <laughs> Elmira is controversial among Tiny Toon's fans, but the writers loved her enough to give her her own spin-off, where she took in Pinky and the Brain. Shoot, babe. What do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. As pets. It's what the network wants. Why bother to complain? The other major Cree summer role from my childhood is Susie Carmichael from Rugrats. Hi, my name's Susie. What's yours? Susie started off as a recurring character who showed up occasionally to be the anti-Angelica as an older kid who was actually nice to the babies. Susie gradually became a more important character as the show went on, to the point where eventually her status as a main character was solidified in the sequel series All Grown Up, where Cree Summer sings the theme song. All grown up. For people a bit younger than me, they probably remember Cree Summer as number five on Codename Kids Next Door, and also her older sister, who was named Cree. <laughs> Number five was the second in command of the kids next door, and she tended to be portrayed as the cool one most of the time, and had one of the more unique voices that Cree Summer has done. Number five's sister Cree was usually seen as the face of the villainous teenagers who worked for the evil adults and wore special costumes called Battle Ready Armor, or bras. Another role that some people younger than me may feel nostalgic for is the ghost hunter Valerie Gray in Danny Phantom. You know how I said I didn't really like Fenton? I kind of like him now. Valerie is tricked into thinking the main character has wronged her, and as a result, starts hunting him with the help of gear provided by the villain Vlad Masters, 
while being friends with uh, with Danny and their civilian identities. And possibly more? One of Cree Summer's more recent roles that really impressed me was her performance as Catwoman in DC Superhero Girls. Looks like I'm the cat who got the cream. <laughs> where she is clearly channeling Eartha Kitt's performance in the 60s Batman series. This is the most catacaustic plan in my catalog of crime. And is doing a pretty good impersonation at that. She was also the only female member of the Mummies Alive, Nefertina. A actually, the prince is right. I am Nefertina. I only pretended to be a man since women are not allowed to drive the chariots of the pharaoh. And trust me, the show is way better than the cheesy character names would imply. A recurring role she had in the TV show Gargoyles was Hyena, an insane member of the pack who is at times shown to be attracted to the robotic leader of the team, Coyote. Well, I like a man who brings me weapons. Some of Cree Summer's performances have been as characters who have been played by multiple actors, uh, such as her performance as the uh, as the former Autobot Black Arachnia, who has now become ashamed and disgusted of herself because she's been turned into a part organic. She's also the Transformers animated equivalent of Elita One, who is most well known as the girlfriend of Optimus Prime. <laughs> My friends call me Black Arachnia. For anyone who's seen the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, you're familiar with the character of Nebula, Thanos' daughter and Gamora's sister. In the Guardians of the Galaxy animated series, Nebula is another character played by Kree Summer. And in this, she has chosen to permanently leave uh, Thanos' side to work for Ronin, seemingly out of some romantic feelings for Ronin, possibly. Hello, sister. You called, I came. Now show me what I want. So that's some of the highlights of Cree Summer's voice acting career. It's so sad to say goodbye, but maybe someday we'll meet again in another life. Until then, voiceover, and out.